Hey everybody, it's Scott Hansen again from the riffle.blogspot.com. I'm here to do my ninth and last fly tying tutorial in my Joy of Fly Tying series. This is the last fly I teach in all of my beginning fly tying classes that I teach around here. It's a fly that uh, I'm sort of locally famous for, I guess. I tie a lot of parachutes. I uh, wrote about my techniques in the spring uh, 2017 issue of Fly Tire Magazine. If you want to check that out, otherwise uh, you can just watch this video and see how I do it. Um, last fly is just a, a generic uh, parachute. I tie it with whatever um, colors I happen to have available at the time. You can uh, modify it, the colors and the sizes to match whatever mayfly you have uh, hatching near you at the time. Uh, the fly in the vise right here is uh, size 14 that I tied in one of my classes. It's just uh, kind of a sulfur. It's got a light green body, um, light ginger or yellow mayfly tails for the tail, um, ginger hackle, and a cream colored post. Uh, I'm going to do something similar to that tonight. And uh, I'll show you all my techniques on how to get uh, your parachute haggle to look pretty good most of the time. Take this fly out of the vise, put in another hook, this is another size 14, this is a Dairiki uh, model 320. Any standard dry fly hook will work just fine. I'm going to start my thread, uh, this is the way I do it, I always start my thread at the same spot when I'm tying parachutes. I started at about the one quarter point or so, so right about there, quarter of the way back from the eye, and I will go ahead and just fill in um, the hook shank all the way back to the bend, and then just bring my thread back to that one quarter point, which is where I'm going to start everything at. I like to tie in the tails first, so I've got just some pale yellow uh, mayfly tails, as I talked about in my last video with the thorax done. These are just uh, synthetic mayfly tails that you can buy at a fly shop. Kind of like paintbrush bristles. I am uh, going to take, oh, for size 14, probably oh, 8 to 10 fibers here. And I'm just going to eyeball those. I'm going to lay them up on the top of my hook shank just to eyeball them, see what, how long I want them. I want them to be about the length of the hook shank. Once I figure out how long that is, I'll just kind of move them back into position here. And I like to tie them in starting at the one quarter point there. And I hold on to them so that they don't roll around the hook shank as I make my way back. And just tie those in nice and tight so they are hanging off the end of the hook. Now I usually like to take one wrap underneath them to kind of stand them up, splay them out a little bit, and uh, I don't know if it helps or not, but I like the way it looks. I'm going to bring my thread back to the one quarter point and I can trim off those butt ends of the mayfly tails. <clears throat> and now I put in my post. For a post, I like to use Antron or Poly Yarn, either or. Uh, Antron's got a little bit more shimmer, and it doesn't de-poof as quickly as Poly Yarn, but Poly Yarn works too. I'm going to take, I've got about a 3 inch long section of Antron yarn here. This is some cream colored Antron. I'm just going to loop this straight up underneath the hook shank here, right in front of my thread. And just hold it together straight up with my left thumb and forefinger. My thread is behind the uh, yarn still there. If you can see that, I'm going to take my thread from behind to right in front and kind of bind down the very front of that yarn just with three or four wraps. And then I will pull it straight up with my left, my right thumb and forefinger and I take my thread from behind or from in front and go behind and kind of bind down the back part of that yarn. And that, with three or four wraps, that just kind of stands everything straight up. Now I'm going to want to um, make this 
uh, more sturdy for so that I can wrap my hackle on it. So I'm just actually going to wrap just around the wing itself. I'm not going to go around the hook at all. So I just kind of take it from one side of the yarn, and throw it over over the hook, but I'm not going around the hook. I'm just going around the yarn as I do this three or four times here. Maybe a few more than that. Make a nice little base of thread, if you can see that, right at the bottom of that yarn wing. Now, once I've got about a few wraps at the bot very bottom, I'm going to work my way up the yarn. And I just uh, wrap my uh, thread right around that yarn. Just kind of work my way up about an eighth of an inch or so. And then once I get up an eighth of an inch, I'll just work my way back down. Do a few figure eights around the base of the thread just to make sure everything's nice and tight. We don't want it flopping around the hook shank as we uh, as we tie it or as we fish it. So I just do a few figure eights right on there and I leave my thread hanging in front of the wing. Okay, now I'm going to get my hackle ready. And I've got a uh, ginger dyed grizzly keo saddle hackle here that I've been using for a few flies. This is perfectly sized, size 14 hackle. I'm going to get this ready the same way I get all of my hackle ready that I tie in as hackle. I'm going to I just pull the barbs out at a right angle to the stem there and I will go in from the end and trim the fibers off leaving little nubbins there along the hackle stem about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch or so now to tie this in, this is very important, this is the way uh, this is my technique for tying in the parachute hackle I'm going to come in from the far side of the hook, so the side your side of, the, of as you're watching this on the video I come in from your side of the fly and I make sure I hold my hackle so that the curve uh, or the, the pretty side of the feather, the shiny side, is down. That way the hackle fibers are all kind of curved up. If you can tell how I'm doing that. So I'm holding it um, kind of parallel to the tabletop right now. I come in from the far side of the hook and I just lay the stem the stem with the uh, with the nubbins on it, right behind the pair or the uh, yarn wing, and I just kind of lay that on the hook shank, right behind the wing. My thread is in front of the wing, so I just uh, in one fell swoop I just go from in front to behind, and I trap that hackle stem down on the hook shank right behind the wing. And just do a few wraps right on that hackle stem there and uh, that's tied in I'm going to then marry this to my post so I'm just gonna pull the feather straight up on the far side of the wing opposite of me so your side of the wing as you watch this on the video and I'm just going to marry that uh, stem that I cut the nubbins off of right onto the post where I wrapped my thread wraps earlier. So I've got my wing married right to the post um, on the side of the fly opposite of me. Now I bring my thread back down. I'm gonna uh, wrap my thread all the way back to the bend or to the tail here. And I'm gonna put my entire body on here before I wrap the hackle. For this fly I've chosen just some uh, pale yellow uh, super fine dubbing. This is just going to be like a type of a sulfur imitation or so. And we don't uh, want a very fat body since this is going to represent a nice slender little mayfly. So for the size 14 I've got, this might be a little too much, I've got about two and a half inches or so of uh, dubbing on my thread. 
We'll see how that goes. I'm going to start right behind or in front of the uh, tail. And when you use saddle hackle, it can kind of flop around and get in the way as you wrap your body, but that's okay as long as you don't bind it down anywhere. It'll be just fine. Make a nice tapered body up towards the wing. Now once I get to the wing, I'll just go from behind the wing to in front. Make a couple wraps there. Now I'll, uh, I'll turn my fly so that I can see the far side of the, of the fly. And I want to make sure I cover up any thread wraps or anything like that, especially if I'm using thread that's not the same color as my dubbing and just uh, fill that in nice nice and full there and once I get a nice uh, full mayfly body I'll just leave my thread hang right behind the eye okay so now all we have to do is wrap the hackle and this is the way I do it uh, my my feather is is tied into the wing post there so I'm going to take it and just kind of pull it down so it's parallel to the tabletop straight away from me and my first wrap is going to go counterclockwise right around the top of those thread wraps that I have on my wing post and as I come around my second wrap is just going to go right below that so each wrap I'm just going to duck underneath the previous wrap and I can kind of pull my wing forward and backward here as I'm going around just to make sure I don't um, mash down any of the fibers that I have already wrapped. Usually I try to get about five or six wraps of hackle here on a fly as I make my way down from the top of the thread wraps on the post down to the body. And I wasn't really counting uh, this time so that looks about right. It's about it's pretty full. So they come around on my last wrap to the front of the fly. I'm just going to pull it straight down and over on the opposite side of the hook from where I am. And then I'm going to bring my thread up on my side of the hook. Bring it straight up, straight forward so I can duck it underneath the hackle in front. And then this is kind of kind of tricky let me zoom out so I can kind of show you what I'm doing here now well, that's in there we go Is that gonna be in focus there we go so I'm pulling my hackle straight down on the far side of the hook I'm gonna bring my thread up on straight up on my side of the hook as I pull it forward, I'm going to duck it underneath the hackle. And then as I come to my side, I, I drop my bobbin in my left hand, which I'm also holding the hackle with. And then I grab the hackle with my right hand so that I can uh, get my bobbin on this side of my, on the, my side of, the, of my hand and grab it with my right hand. And I just do that. That's tied in now. So I can just uh, let go of the hackle after I get one wrap in and do three or four or five wraps. And that should be tied in nice and tight. Now, if I, since my hackle is now on the bottom side of the hook shank, if I let my thread hang like that at the front, and try to snip this off I'm more than likely going to snip my thread so what I do I, I uh, pull it up so there's not much thread out of the bobbin and I just pull it up and over and just let the bobbin hang on my vise while I go in that kind of gets the thread up and out of the way while I go in with my curved scissors here right below the eye Trim out the hackle stem and any loosey-goosey hackle fibers that I might have uh, matted down. And I bring my thread back and see if I can zoom in again here. So 
Now I can just pull my hackle, to finish this fly off, I can just pull my hackle up and out of the way. Wrap my thread a few times and make a nice little thread head. Take my whip finish, which is uh, missing. Oh, there it is. Take my whip finish and just do the same thing. I can just pull the fibers out of the way. One that doesn't want to cooperate, so I'll just trim him out later. Give my whip finish a few times. Trim those fibers. Trim my thread. Pop my hackle back into its upright position. And then I trim the hat, the uh, antron wing to about the length of the body. There we go. You can see hackle is all on top of the body nice and full doesn't uh, droop down over the body and uh, floats the fly very nicely just like that so there's my uh, the last fly in our series um, I'll be uh, making a lot more videos but not for my joy of fly tying series so I hope you uh, enjoyed the series. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Have a great day.